Hi everyone, welcome to the visual guide for the second coil of Bahamut, Turn 2, also known as Turn 7. After an exciting set of elevator trash, we're put up against a menacing Melusine. It's easy to get petrified by her, but just take a deep breath and look in the mirror to see the true face of the fight. Unless you find yourself stoned, you'll be rocking her world in no time. My name is Ms. Tech, and I'll be your raid guide. Melusine is a relatively simple fight that builds on its mechanics with each phase. However, even after learning the entirety of fight mechanics, it may take your group some time to work out all the wiggles. The bulk of the fight comes from a combination of three master mechanics that will occur throughout the entire fight. Cursed Voice, Cursed Shriek, and our newfound friends, the Renauds. Let's go over what these are before we put together the big picture. Cursed Voice is cast by Melusine and will always hit three people. One of the tanks, any one of the damage dealers, and one of the healers. This cast will place a 5-9 to nine second debuff on those players, denoted by this triangle debuff. After the duration of the debuff, anyone marked with Cursed Voice will shoot out a fairly long frontal cone that will petrify anyone and anything caught in the blast. Anyone hit by Cursed Voice is highly vulnerable to death as any damage to them, no matter how small, automatically becomes a one-hit kill. That said, it's absolutely crucial that players do not petrify any other players, ever. Furthermore, hitting any add or melisine with Cursed Voice will place a stacking damage buff on them that will last the duration of the fight. Don't make your life any harder and avoid this as well. Master mechanic number two is Cursed Streak. This is another cast that will place yet another debuff on another player, denoted this time by the circle debuff. Any affected player will blast a room-wide petrification that will hit anyone and everything on the platform, resulting in instant death, unless they find somewhere to hide. So how do we handle this? The platform has no pillars or anything to hide behind. This leads us into master mechanic number three, the Renauds. Melusine will periodically spawn a massive cyclops somewhere on the platform. They do not follow a conventional threat table and will instead fixate on the first person to damage it. The Renaud will one-hit kill its target once it's in melee range. As such, anyone assigned to deal with Renauds needs to be proficient at kiting. Luckily, they spawn with a native heavy on them, making them fairly easy to outrun. Note that other slowing debuffs or binds can stack with this if you so feel the need. In our group, we use a bar to kite the Renaud as they can still effectively deal damage while running around like maniacs. However, any range damage dealer can easily do this, so decide what's best for your group. This ad is the only thing you want to purposely hit with Cursed Voice. For the most part, if you're a tank or a damage healer, you will not be hitting anything with your Cursed Voice. As soon as that debuff goes out, those two players with Cursed Voice need to keep an eye on their timer and turn away at around 2 or 3 seconds left so as to blast their voice at nothing or off the platform. To avoid confusion, we limit the responsibility of the Renaud Freeze to whatever healer has Cursed Voice at the time. Hitting a Renaud with Cursed Voice is the key to avoiding Cursed Shriek here. A frozen Renaud is essentially a massive lump of rock, perfect for hiding behind and line of sighting everything else. Let's go back a bit. The Renaud will spawn and the Bard begins to kite it, keeping it around a specific area on the platform and binding it once it's in a good spot. For us, this happens to be right behind where the healers are standing throughout the fight, marked by the A waypoint. Once Cursed Voice comes out, everyone but the healer needs to redirect their voices away. The healer will aim their voice at the Renaud, taking care not to also blast the kiter. Once the Renaud is frozen, the fight will carry on as normal until the next Renaud spawns or a Cursed Streak comes out. Every time a new Renaud spawns, the Bard will continue to grab and kite it in the same area. Essentially, you would want a frozen Renaud up at any time for any potential Shrieks. You can always refreeze a pre-existing Renaud. If you have more than one frozen Renaud up, you can target the least ideally positioned one and destroy it. For the intended strategy, you don't need more than one up. Anything that is frozen will shatter with a bug spart, so let the Bard decide which one to kill. Groups may also choose to spawn and freeze four Renauds and then continuously refreeze them over and over. Once you have four Renauds up, no extra ones will spawn, allowing your kiter to tunnel damage on the bus. This comes with its own complications, so be sure to decide what your group is doing beforehand. Once Shriek comes out, the player debuffed with Shriek will run to the other side of the Renaud and wait for their Shriek to blast. This player needs to be careful to stand outside of the Renaud's hitbox. Once they are properly positioned, the rest of the raid can easily LOS the affected player by stacking near the middle of the platform. As long as you're not in direct line of sight to the Shriek player, you'll be fine. These three master mechanics will happen for the remainder of the fight, so getting into the groove of handling this is essential for a win. Now that we've got the bulk out of the way, let's talk a bit about some of the smaller mechanics. 
Melusine herself has a frontal cleave and tanks will position her roughly around the division between the outer and inner rings. This is to prepare for the ground mechanic later on in the fight. The rest of the raid should ensure not to stand in front of her. She will also target any ranged damage dealers with Circle of Flames. Circle of Flames is a fireball that will hit the targeted player and slash onto anyone in their vicinity. Since two or more of these blasts will kill their targets, we have the ranged damage spread around the center of the room with the healers in the middle. In the first two phases, Melusine will also periodically cast Circle Blade, a point-blank AoE that the melee and tanks should do their best to avoid. At 80%, Mel will spawn her first set of adds, a group of three melee adds that will emulate Melusine's cleave and circle blade abilities. The first one will spawn in the south, the second in the northeast, and the last one in the northwest. These adds have a very painful frontal cleave called tail swipe. The off tank needs to pick up the ad as soon as possible and keep it facing away from the raid. Remember to always look away with Cursed Voice and run behind the Renaud when the Shriek comes out. With the timing, the second ad will spawn after the Shriek Blast, at which point you should have the first ad down. Since most of the raid is in the center of the room, tanks should be sure to pull these ads at a tangent to the inner circle so you don't accidentally cleave people on your way to positioning your ads. Kill this ad and run to grab the last one. Remember that in this entire ad phase you are still handling Cursed Voice, Shriek, and Renaud spawns. It can get very hectic, but as long as you handle each mechanic on its own, one step at a time, it'll be easy. Once that last ad is down, the raid can refocus on the boss. Handle voices, shrieks, and renades as usual. At 60%, the second set of adds will spawn, along with a new ground mechanic. The adds are four stationary archers at each cardinal point that will target random party members with arrow deluge and aim shot abilities. Healing can be dangerous at the beginning of this phase, but outgoing damage will go down as you kill each ad, so get these down as fast as possible. Again, don't forget about the voices, the shrieks, and the big baddies. At this point, Melusine will no longer cast Circle Blade, which is nice, since the raid will have to move a bit more to avoid the grand mechanic. It begins with the center ring filled with a purple void zone at the same time that the ranged adds spawn. It will move out through each section of the platform and back in, in a fixed pattern throughout the rest of the fight. These no-no spots will do a small amount of damage over time at first, but eventually explode before disappearing, potentially killing anyone in them at the time. While it's possible to quickly move through them if absolutely necessary, be sure not to get caught in it when it explodes. It's often best to wait until it disappears before moving back into your position, especially before and after shrieks. Once the adds are down, everyone can refocus the boss and restabilize for the last add and phase. At 35%, the last add will spawn in the north of the platform. This add introduces one of the last new mechanics to the fight, Petrifaction. When this is cast, any player caught facing the add will be turned to stone. The raid should focus this last add as soon as it comes up and keep an eye out for that cast. As soon as she begins to cast, all players should physically turn their characters away, no exceptions. We prefer to tank this ad in the middle of the room, allowing as much space as possible to still handle cursed voices while this ad is up. After the first petrifaction, we use a melee limit break 3 on her. The goal is to get her down and out of the way as soon as we can so we can stabilize and get back into our comfort zone. Remember while you're burning down this ad you are still dodging purple, handling voices, renades, and avoiding shrieks. Like I said earlier, this fight is a bunch of little, easy to handle mechanics that snowball into one hectic fight. I can't stress keeping calm enough. You know how to handle each mechanic on its own, so remember to take it one step at a time. Once that ad is down, Melusine will gain the Petrifaction ability. That means the group should now refocus the boss and turn away from her as soon as she begins to cast it. She will also gain the Venomous Tail ability, which, depending on your DPS, will be cast 2-3 to three times during the rest of the fight. Venomous Tail will put up a poison debuff on a random player. As long as this debuff is active, it will do a pretty spicy amount of AoE damage to the entire raid. Healers should be ready to dispel whomever the debuff lands on. If you've gotten this far, you can probably handle the voices and the renades in your sleep, but I don't recommend playing with your eyes closed. Remember to maintain your focus and handle each mechanic as it comes. At this point, you're not facing anything you haven't already seen. It's exceptionally easy to wipe the raid in the blink of an eye if you do lose focus during Cursed Voice, and I would highly recommend having someone call out each voice to keep everyone awake all the way to the end. Since this fight is fairly long, let's do one final recap. Your designated kiter will grab each Renaud as they spawn, dragging him around a specific area. 
All players need to keep an eye out for voice and blast away from the raid. If you're a healer with voice, be sure to blast the Renaud, freezing it in place. When Shriek comes out, that player will run behind the Renaud, taking care to position out of line of sight of the rest of the raid. The rest of the raid needs to take care not to be in LOS as well. Do this a hundred times throughout the fight. Kill the adds as soon as they come out. Avoid purple goo. Kill more adds. Repeat, repeat, repeat. At 35%, focus the new ad and burn it down. Turn away from petrifaction. Refocus the boss. Avoid voices. Freeze Renaud. Dodge purple. Avoid shrieks. Avoid petrification. Dispel venomous tail. You get the idea. The enrage timer of 11 minutes is quite lenient, so don't worry too much about rushing through everything. And there you have it, turn seven down. Congratulations on your new loot and buckle up for turn eight. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. As always, thanks for watching. Till next time.